Alan planned to go on a holiday with his family to Goa. He booked accommodation at a hotel through the website www.travel.com. The images and description of the hotel seemed quite satisfactory on the website. But, when he reached the hotel, he was shocked to see that the facilities provided were very poor. On his return, he complained to both the online portal and the hotel authorities of the bad services. He claimed a compensation from the online portal for making false representation. But, in vain. Have you experienced such consumer issues? Like poor or deficient services, defective goods, product or service significantly not as described, or retailer charging excess price? What did you do about it? Maybe, sent several reminders or called several times but received no response. You may have either stopped at this not knowing whom to approach. Or, if you are an aggressive consumer, you may have approached the court to redress your grievance and seek appropriate remedy. But, wait. Is there an alternative way you can try and settle the dispute with the business? Try mediation. Mediation is a dispute resolution process, wherein a neutral third party called the mediator is appointed. The mediator assists the parties to resolve the dispute and arrive at a negotiated settlement. The new Consumer Protection Act, 2019 recognizes resolution of consumer disputes through mediation. In the Afghans case, the Supreme Court of India held that consumer disputes wherein the business is keen to maintain its reputation, credibility, and product popularity can be referred to mediation. Here are some reasons why you should try mediation. Number 1. Mediation is a party-centric process. That is, the parties have the complete liberty to participate in the process and decide the outcome of the dispute. 2. The entire process is confidential. 3. It's a voluntary process. 4. It's informal. 5. The focus is on parties' interests. 6. Mediation aims at a win-win settlement between parties. And. Settlement is final and cannot be appealed. You may approach a mediator to help you resolve the dispute even before filing a complaint before the court. This is called private mediation. You may have a dispute pending before the consumer court. Either or all the parties may make a request to the court to refer the matter to mediation. Or, the court may itself direct the parties to approach mediation during the trial. This is called court annexed mediation. The Consumer Protection, Mediation, Rules, 2020 lists out some matters that cannot be referred to mediation. 1. Medical negligence resulting in grievous injury or death. 2. Defaults or offences for which applications for compounding of offences are made. 3. Cases involving serious and specific allegations of fraud. Fabrication of documents. Forgery. Impersonation. And coercion of offences. 4. Cases relating to criminal and non-compoundable offences. 5. Cases involving public interest or the interest of numerous persons. The consumer courts may also choose not to refer a matter to mediation if it appears that no elements of settlement exist, or that mediation is not appropriate to the circumstances of the case. The mediation process begins with a request by either or both parties to mediate the dispute. The request is made to the court, if the matter is pending or it may be made to a private mediator or mediation institution. The request for mediation must be in writing.
the mediator is then appointed. If one party has initiated the mediation process, the mediator sends a notice inviting the other party slash parties to participate in the mediation process. Remember, it's a voluntary process and it's left to the option of the parties to resolve through mediation. On parties coming to the mediation process, the mediator makes an opening statement introducing the mediation process and sets ground rules. The parties may also agree upon the preliminary exchange of documents, if any. The mediator gathers information and identifies issues. The mediator then enables parties to explore their interests. Joint and private sessions are held. This would enable parties to develop options for settlement. On evaluating options, the parties may reach a settlement. And the parties may be agreeable to all or certain terms. A settlement agreement is then drawn between the parties with the help of the mediator. The settlement agreement becomes final and binding on the parties. And it's enforceable just like any other contract. Thank you for watching the video. If you found it informative, please do like, share and subscribe.